Hi, and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden and Patch. It's uh, July the 8th, 2014, and I kind of was thinking, you know, I haven't done a uh, Pumpkin uh, 101 in quite some time. I've been doing pumpkins for about um, eight or nine years now, I guess about eight years. And uh, so I just wanted to share uh, my knowledge and things that I know about the uh, plant for, through uh, years of research and, uh, and as well as growing them. And like I said, so I, this is going to be a uh, Pumpkins 101, kind of just the basic parts of the plant, what it's doing, how it does it, all that kind of stuff like that. Now, I can only show you so much of it right now because it's at a certain stage where uh, of course it's not blooming any flowers at this point in time so I'll have to save some of that information for later but I just wanted to show you something and I just discovered through uh, just my observations here on this plant that I already got a secondary vine growing off of this thing and it's barely maybe not even a, maybe a month old if that uh, so anyways here's a pumpkin plant okay in the Kirkabitz family and it is uh, this particular variety is a Howden uh, pumpkin uh, this whole bed is in, in fact is Howden's and it belongs to the Pepo family of pumpkins and there are different uh, uh, families within the pumpkins there's Mashita and then there's um, Maxima like I said Pepo and there's a couple others I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, easy to find uh, on the internet. And uh, one thing I know for sure, uh, if you're growing Pepo variety and let's say Maxima variety of pumpkins, they cannot cross-pollinate. A Maxima family pumpkin cannot be used, the pollen can't be used to cross-pollinate with a Pepo and vice versa. Now, within each family of uh, pumpkins, you have many different varieties, okay? And uh, now, you can, within the family, use different varieties of pumpkin uh, flowers to pollinate each other. For example, um, everything that I'm growing in this garden um, and in my other beds that are pumpkins are all in the Pepo family, okay? And like I said, this bed happens to be Howden. And over in that bed over there, I've just started seeds in a cup. One that I know of is, is popping through the soil a little bit with a little help from me. <laughs> um, and uh, those are uh, expert pumpkins. Um, there are some Racer Plus varieties, and there's also uh, Charisma uh, variety of pumpkins. And those are over in those beds over there too, those, the round ones. Uh, and they all belong to the Pepo family. So say, for example, uh, this particular plant, uh, a female blooms one day, and I don't have any uh, male flowers on here to pollinate her. Well, I could go in the bed here and see if there's other males of the, uh, of the Howden variety to pollinate her, and I would use that. But if there's not, for whatever reason, I can go to, you know, some of my other Pepo family pumpkins, the Racer Plus, the Experts, the Charismas, and or whatever else you may grow. As long as they're in the Pepo family, I can use that pollen from the male flowers to pollinate the female of this particular Pepo family variety. Okay? And same would be true for Maxima. Uh, Cinderella pumpkins and, let's say, Big Max are in the Maxima family variety of pumpkins. I can use the pollen from each one of those to pollinate the flowers of the others. As long as it's a Maxima family pumpkin to Maxima family pumpkin, you're good to go. Or Pepo to Pepo or Mashita to Mashita. Everything's fine. But you can't cross-pollinate uh, within pumpkin families. No Pepo to Maxima, no Maxima to Mashita, and all that other stuff. All right, so enough with that. Take a look. All right, let's start down here. I'm sorry about that. And there we go. The stem comes out of the ground. Ooh, that popsicle stick. <laughs> I used that to mark the, where I planted my seeds so I knew where to look for them. <laughs> but it comes out of the ground right below this leaf here. So it comes out of the ground right there, right below my finger. And this leaf right here. And there's another one just like it on the other side. 
those are the first leaves that pop out okay and those are cotyledon leaves the baby leaves okay and don't worry about that white stuff that was some oil spray stuff that kind of went awry and it got a little sunburn so not not worried about that but those are the first leaves that come out and those are the cotyledon leaves now one thing you need to know about cotyledon leaves is eventually they will yellow and they will wilt and die and brown and all that brown out and everything like that and die off that's normal don't be worried about you know oh is my plant got a disease uh is it dying what's going on is it being attacked no with the with the cotyledon leaves they eventually will yellow back brown out and die that's what they do their job is done and because the rest of the plant is uh is growing and taking over and the leaves are producing the food now the true leaves like this right here and just to give you a, a perspective up oh, something's been chewing on that leaf mm -mm -mm. sorry about that but to give you a perspective the size of the leaves that you can get and this is a good sized leaf okay and you can see and here's an even bigger leaf down here you know um so let me just out of curiosity look under here and see what could have been nibbling on my leaf i don't know but i've I'll, i've already kind of taken care of that so anyhow the first set of leaves true leaves that you get out of here are uh you know they're they're smaller okay they, they're like they're this size right here okay kind of small and uh eventually they uh you know get bigger and bigger as you already saw now the uh, plant keeps on going and going and uh, eventually what you get and you keep tra uh, trailing it so here's the vine starts all the way back over here like I said and it's coming across here all the way out here and it keeps forking and forking and forking and you can see it comes up here there's another stalk and leaf stalk and leaf but then so the vine comes out here and it goes this way and here you have a stalk and leaf but over here the vine uh, comes right here you got a stalk and leaf and the vine continues right here let me get a close-up up here okay these are brand new leaves born right here and uh, this is a, actually this is the another stalk and leaf ending and the growth continues up here so here is actually where the vine is continuing on you see all these little leaves and stuff right in here all right this is the rest of the plant all tucked in here folded nice and neat and it just keeps on growing and it, it grows out spread uh, branches out uh, you get a stalk and leaf stalk and leaf and then the and then you'll find that this growth like this continues off in another direction Okay, and within here are all the leaves that this plant's going to get, most of them anyways. Uh, the female flowers, the male flowers are all tucked in here in this itty bitty little cluster. It's hard to believe, but it's all in there. And it just keeps on going and going, right? So, that's, that's you, you, so you can trail the vine that way and, and see which way it's going. Okay, now another part of the plant that I want to show you are the tendrils okay and that's these little spaghetti like little strings here they're coming out here and right through here okay and the job of the tendril is to grab hold of anything in its way wrap around it and help secure the plant in case of wind and it just gives it a good stable stabilizing uh, factor you know, you can wrap it around trellises, pipes, it'll grab onto grass, sticks, anything in its way that it can hold on to, it will grab it. And it helps secure the plant, helps keep it anchored. And it also helps it to crawl across the gr uh, ground or to vine out all along the ground. Okay. And it, like I said, it'll grab onto anything. And look what this one tendril did right here. See, it's coming out here. It wrapped around a stalk that goes to a leaf down here. It wrapped around it, and it'll wrap around itself. It'll wrap around other plants. I remember one time a few years ago, I had to 
uh, de- uh, uh, break up two plants that were locked onto each other. They were their tendrils were so wrapped around each other that the two plants were kind of closed up like an umbrella, and I had to carefully unravel the tendrils from each other so that the plant could open up, you know, and and start doing its thing better. I was <laughs> so that was kind of interesting, and uh, so that's that was what was going on with that. And, um, so, that's what the job of the tendril is. Now, if you look down right in here, okay, what we have here, well, actually, that looks like, that looks like the possibility of new, new growth. And there, I'll have to double check on that later, it may be a little too soon to tell. But there's also a flower in there too, a male flower. Okay, and you can see right here at my fingertip that I'm touching, there's a male flower bud right there. And there, oh, let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a male flower bud right there. And you know this is a male flower because there's no baby fruit at the bottom of the petals. So you got the top of the petals and it goes down and then the little stem comes up to the attached to the bottom of the petals. This is a male flower because there's no uh, pumpkin fruit, baby pumpkin fruit underneath it at the bottom of the petals. Okay, so that's how I know that this is a male. When the females come along later on, the males will come first most of the time because they want to open up and attract the bees and get them coming to their, to their plants so that when the females come along, the bees already have a flight path in which to come to your uh, garden because the male pollen has already been there attracting the bees. Okay, so female flowers will come on later. And don't be alarmed if, if many of your male flowers and even female flowers will uh, abort in the beginning. That's t- kind of typical too. Heat could be causing it. It could be under stress in some other ways. Not enough water, too much water, uh, disease, bug attacks, heat, like I said. So, so there's a number of different factors that could be causing it. Sometimes the plant is just not ready to have a baby pumpkin growing. So it's, it's just not mature enough. It doesn't feel it's ready. And the plant knows. It really does. <laughs> it's, it's remarkable. Okay. Here's one thing that's kind of cool that I, I um, found out tonight on this particular plant. Now, this, this is a testament to how good, I guess, my soil and, and my uh, program is uh, here working with this. This, right here, I believe, is a, I'm sorry, secondary vine already coming out right here. Okay, now time will tell on that one, but I, I believe that it is, but I could be wrong. I will know a little bit later. It's a little hard to tell. Got a stalk and leaf, got another stalk and leaf, and it looks like there's a small cluster of um, more vine or uh, leaves in there. So we'll, we'll see what that what that yields. Um, so anyhow, uh, what I'm going to do because I am growing up, growing these uh, vines to go up this trellis. I'm going to have to train this vine to go up the trellis. Now I could go this way with it because it's right here to the trellis and start getting it to go up. However, this vine is already curving in this direction and to do so, it, it, it could, it's a possibility of stressing the stem and it might snap the plant or cause some damage and I don't want to do that. I, I mean, I could probably because it's young enough and it's very flexible, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully bend this in here and then I just put up, you could put a pencil, you could put popsicle sticks, tw- uh, any kind of thing. Uh, let me get my popsicle stick that I just had here. And I just kind of, it's kind of a little hard to do this with one hand holding the video. But you just, you know, stick this in the ground and there you go. See? Now, the vine is being turned to go out 
that direction. And then I'll eventually curve it back around and, and bring it right back up and go up the trellis. Okay, and that's going to save you space. It's going to save me space. So that's one way you can get around if you have a small yard and you, uh, and you want to grow pumpkins, especially a long vine variety, which are Howdens are one of them. Uh, you can grow short vine uh, varieties, and I do have some of those. The Racer Plus the, uh, and the Charisma are going to be short vines because I don't have a whole lot of space over there. So I didn't want to get a long pumpkin, a long vine pumpkin. Now, my expert pumpkins I thought were short variety, but I looked them back up and found out that they were long vine variety of pumpkins. I'm like, oh my gosh. And they're fairly hefty, so I don't know if this nylon trellis is really going to hold it. I might have some trouble with that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so anyways, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could really tell you right about now. Um, there are, of course, a number of different uh, number of different um, bugs that like to attack pumpkins and anything that's really in the Kirkupitz family. Squash fine borers, squash bugs, and cucumber beetles are, are your three major attackers. Of course, you can have aphids. Uh, aphids usually haven't been attacking my pumpkins much, uh, but squash vine borers are the biggest enemy. Squash bugs are also one of the biggest enemies. Um, now, I will say I've had good fortune so far, knock on wood here, that uh, I've been able to eradicate so far my squash bugs. Um, I'm using a certain product that um, is, it seems to be working really well. Plus, I've come out and, uh, you know, did some... Uh, attacking of, of the squash bugs with a pair of scissors <laughs> uh, when I found them. And I have not seen a squash bug around here in almost a month. And I haven't found any more eggs. Now, I did rip out a lot of my plants um, because squash vine borers got to them. Uh, so that's just, it's just uh, one of those things. And um, I'm going to be trying a couple more techniques that I've learned or at least one more technique that I learned that I'm going to try to implement, and that's using peppermint oil as a deterrent for the squash vine borer moth. Uh, so anyhow, um, there's not a whole lot else to, to talk about, at, I guess, right now. This thing will continue to keep doing its job, uh, vining out, vining out, vining out, and eventually, like I said, the male flowers will come first, followed by female flowers, and you'll know the female flower because you look at the bottom of the petals where the stem comes up to meet the uh, petals. If there's a round or if there's a ball-shaped, sphere-shaped object at the bottom of the petals, that's your baby fruit. And that's actually true on all the Kirkabitz family, whether it's squash, zucchini, watermelons, cantaloupes, pumpkins, whatever the case may be. Um, so that's an easy way to tell. And when the male flowers and the female flowers uh, start to arrive, I'll do other uh, pumpkin videos, pumpkin 101 videos. So this is just part one. I figured, like I said, it's been a while since I did one, uh, you know, kind of going back to my roots. Because for me, uh, this was originally where I started, was growing pumpkins. My daughter, uh, Piper, and I, I just, one summer, I just said, you know what, I... I, we had these pumpkin seeds saved from the previous uh, jack o' lantern pumpkin we had back at Halloween. So the following spring, um, I just said, you know what, I'll just uh, grow them just because, you know, I like the season of fall and, 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 and Halloween, all that kind of stuff like that. So I was like, well, why not grow some pumpkins? And I didn't really know uh, diddly squat about it, to be honest with you. I just kind of cleared a little bit of the ground. Uh, took some, took the seeds that I had stored from over uh, back in the fall, and I put a few in the ground. I just, you know, I ripped the grass off the surface and maybe dug it just a little bit with a little small hand claw, <laughs> and um, I planted the seeds, and up they came. Now it took a long time for them to grow and mature a pumpkin, but I did get them. And that's where I also learned about squash bugs when I found them in there. I was like, oh, what are these? And I captured a couple, and I went on, Googled them, found out what they were, and then the war was on. <laughs> and it's been an eight- or nine-year war, and I sometimes, uh, most of the time, I lose it. 
but I have I keep trying different things and learning different things and um, so far this year I've had pretty good success so and now we can just find something that really gets keeps these vine borers out of here that would be super I would be a, be happy as can be so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here uh, but just before I go I did want to show you my watermelons they're also in the Kirkabit family I can't help it you know I'm kind of pleased with uh, different uh, different uh, been able to grow some watermelons All right they're not uh, huge big 25 35 pounders you know but um, I got to do some research on them as to how you know when your pumpkin uh, excuse me pumpkins when your watermelons are are ready you know I've heard different things and you know so I will continue to do that here's another this one's got a pretty good length on this one so yeah there's more in there and there's another one ah, right down here right in there so a little these are uh and I got some tomato plants in here that uh, I'm trying to uh, get them to survive after I killed a lot of my other tomato plants. But in any event, um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. And uh, oh, I just wanted to show you this right here. See this? See that little seed right there? <laughs> this is, um, I believe. Um, one of the charisma i kind of come out here after i this is popsicles like i said just marking where i where my seeds were at and i kind of unearthed this a little bit and i know he, this is germinating because i can when i gave it just a little tiny pull i could feel that it was attached and into the ground so i said okay i'm just gonna leave that there and uh the seed coat right here will come off and everything like that but uh usually my pumpkins uh will sprout in about uh three to five days. I know the seed set, the seed packets say, say seven to 14, but generally from my experience, I've been able to get mine to germinate between three to five days, three to six days. I believe this is day four. So I got, and sometimes I go down in there when I get a little anxious, I'm like, all right, why, why, are they, why aren't they coming up in three days or four days? Let me go investigate. So I'll carefully move back the soil a little bit and uh, until I find the seed. And sometimes I find that my seeds have maybe fallen through because of watering and it kind of sunk the seed down too far. Sometimes the seeds just don't germinate or haven't germinated. And so, you know, I might need to get some more seeds ready for planting just to, uh, you know, to kind of cover myself. So I just wanted to show you that and you can see, let's see, hope I can zoom in on there. Not sure that shows up very well. There's a little bit of a lime green cracking showing right there on the edge of the, uh, the seed coat. And that's the baby pl a pumpkin plant inside there coming out. So, kind of cool. All right. From Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch, this is Pumpkins 101.